Hello everyone, thanks for stopping by. I was playing, obviously, with doilies again today. Um, and I got my desk cleaned. <laughs> but I have a table full of things I have to organize. <laughs> if anybody wants to come and do that for me, I'll pay you. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you have plenty of organizing to do yourself. I have a way, or I figured out a way, to make our pretty printed doilies so that they don't tear or rip and you don't have to see white on the back or print on the back. So there's two ways you can do that. The first way is if you tea stain or if you avocado dye or beet dye or um, whatever your doily, um, this particular doily, <clears throat> paper doily was embossed. It was avocado stained and then I embossed it. So it makes it really pretty. So there's a way you can make a pretty doily if you don't have a printer. You can dye it any color. Um, you could you know, use whatever dyes you use to, to, to dye your paper, or you could, um, yeah, so you could do that and you could emboss it, or you could just not emboss it. And I think I have a white one here somewhere that's embossed and not, nothing's done to it. It's just embossed and it just is so elegant. I mean, it looks so pretty, right? I hope you can see that in the camera. Anyway, so there's... <clears throat> A way to have both sides the same but if you say you have this particular doily that you've printed on for example and you don't want to see white on the back you could also take and put a coordinating color on the back all you have to do is match up your doily to where it goes so like for example, this particular doily, I would match up right here because that's where all of it, that's where it matches. And what I did yesterday is I used a doily, a printed doily for a signature and I backed it with a, uh, <clears throat> I backed it with a avocado stain doily. And right here, I put some um, just some computer paper, you know, right here in the middle because I used it for my center signature because I want it. And then I glued just here and here so that I could have a tuck spot and it's the, the center of the signature. So you don't really see this part because it's glued here and here, but anyway, cause I used it as a tuck and it's also the center of my signature. But if you wanted it to be the center of your signature and you didn't want to um you know glue it you could do this or if you wanted to do something like you know make something like this um or actually if you wanted to do something like this because you'd see more of the pattern you know and then i've been making a lot of these i mean right now you can see the white because i'm not being very careful on my folding but and then you slip a tag down in here and then you put a little, you know, um, two little holes and a ribbon and you've got a, a very sweet tuck spot. I'll show you without the pink because it's, yeah, it doesn't look very good. I'll show you. So you could do this and you know, the white's just as pretty, but it's just an idea, but I have an even better idea so that you never have to worry about your doilies tearing. That's one of my biggest things. I don't want my doilies to tear, they're fragile. But I figured out a way to make a non-tear um, doily. So, you know, after you print it, um, isn't that pretty? So pretty. Oh my goodness, so many things you could do. You know, you could flip this up and then flip, you could flip this up 
You could flip this over. I'm just giving you some examples of what I've been doing with my printed doilies. And flip this over. And then make some sort of coordinating tag to go inside. But it was still bothering me that it was white. So I was taking, you know, coordinating paper and I was backing the doily and then, you know, fussy cutting around and using that. But I was having to print on newspaper print because I didn't want to take away from the, you know, the, the, um, the dainty of the doily. I didn't want to make it real heavy looking, you know? So yeah, there's another idea. That's just a little pocket, which I didn't come over very, I didn't do that very square, but. So anyway, I got to thinking about something and it worked. So I'm gonna show you how to make a doily. This is one of them. This used to look like this. You see the difference? And look. And you do it, oops, well, I mean, you won't be doing that. <laughs> I just pulled on the wrong part. Anyway, it's like vellum, full vellum. So, I'm gonna put this aside. I'm not gonna throw it away because I can still use parts of it. And what else? Um, oh, so, Okay, so then um, we went over the, you know, doing something like this. And that would look real pretty, too. If you backed it with that, you know, after you embossed it, that would look real pretty. Or, like I said, you could do something like this, the coordinating color, doily. Match it up, you know, fold it in, and then, you know, do something like that. So, but that's not what we're going to do today. I came up with something better. And I'll show you right now. It's with some, it's with, you'll need three items. And that's it. Three items and you have them in your house. So let me just really quick move this stuff. I am so sorry I'm out of breath. I don't know why. <clears throat> I haven't been running <laughs> at all. I have been doing so much cleaning though. Oh my goodness. Taking everything off of my desk and washing it all down. I mean, it was a good thing. It had a lot of dust and things like that. It's It's been about a month. So, I mean, it's not like it didn't need to be done. So, it just forced me to do it. So yeah, having coffee in your craft room in a container, <laughs> having any kind of liquid in your craft room is a very bad idea because you will spill it. So what do you need? Well, actually, I think you need one, two, three, four, five. So you need some parchment paper and I just put it on, I just taped it down onto um, a placemat. And you need an iron. Now, I ordered a craft iron, but for tonight, I'm going to use just my regular iron. In case you don't have a craft iron, um, you can use your regular iron. You don't need a craft iron. And then you'll need a white candle, just a taper candle, and a vegetable peeler. And once you Peel your candle just like a carrot, you'll end up with candle shavings. Okay, makes sense. I don't have I, I don't want to have to peel the candle. But you just hold it like this and you just run, you know, just like if you're peeling a carrot. Don't go you could go that way, but I just held it onto my um, counter, my kitchen counter on top of some copy paper and I just went down the candle like this and shaved it and then you know folded it and put it in my little container. I have two containers. I have um, one with a cover that twists that's full and then I have this and it came from 
not even one candle. So, so vegetable peeler and white candles. And um, you could use scented candles, but I don't know. I wouldn't use a scented candle because some people have an allergic, you know, an allergic problem to that. Now, a lot of people do waxing with um, beeswax, but I find the beeswax turns things yellow. You can get white beeswax, but it's expensive. These only cost a dollar. Well, a dollar twenty-five for two at the Dollar Tree. So anyway, so you need a vegetable peeler. You need candles, a candle, preferably white. You could use a clear candle. I don't even know if they make clear candles. And then you need an iron. And then you need anything you want to make into a piece of faux vellum. Oh, you need some paper towels. Your kitchen towel. I'll just take one. You only need one. And then what you're going to do is I have my iron set on wool. And I think that's fine. What I did, the, a good way to control your um, parchment paper, your kitchen, you know, baking paper, is to just press it and then it will stop rolling on you. Yeah, so if you wanted to run something like this, like through your printer or something, I, well, you can't run it through your printer unless you have a laser printer because the ink will come off of it. But anyway, it's not what we're doing. Um, so yeah. So just, you know, just run your iron over it and it will behave. So you need some vellum. So you need vellum here. You need a piece of vellum here. You need some shaved candle and you need an iron. And then you need whatever you want to make into vellum. So what I'm going to do is take and do some butterflies first. And show you what you can do with butterflies. So put a few butterflies down. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that's what I want to do. What am I doing? <laughs> so I have a few butterflies down. So we'll start with those. And what I'm going to do is take my shavings and I'm just going to take a few shavings and put them, sprinkle them on my butterflies like that. Can you see what I'm doing? I hope so. I'm just sprinkling a few. You don't even need that many. Just a few shavings like that. Okay. So those are fussy cut butterflies, by the way. Now what you're going to do is take your vellum. I mean, your you're gonna take your parchment paper, you're gonna take your iron, and then you're just gonna do this. I don't have it on a, um, I do not have it on steam. So there's no steam. And then that sh should be enough. To do it and then you're gonna lift this off and I'm just gonna take my paper towel and I'm gonna peel this like this and I'm just gonna wipe it like that that was that looks like it needs a little bit more. You don't even have to use a paper towel, I just do. You just let it dry if you wanted to, but I just use a paper towel just to get off any excess wax. And you'll, your journal will never be someplace where it's so hot that it will melt any wax that's left 
on your um on whatever it is that you're waxing most of the wax comes off anyway with your paper towel so there's two put that over there and then let me take this one and it just needs a little bit of more wax on the wing can you see that where it didn't melt so I'll just put a little bit more wax on there, on that part that didn't melt or didn't have enough wax. And you'll know after your first couple of ones how much wax you'll need for whatever it is that you're waxing. Oh my gosh, these come out so pretty. So that should be enough. And it is. And there you go. And then just take your paper towel and wipe it like this. And I can even wipe the little antennae and I won't break them or, or tear them. It turns it immediately into vellum. And they are just like stickers almost. All you'd have to do is put double-sided sticky tape on it, you know, and just use it like a sticker. Or glue it. It will glue. Fine. So anyway, I've been doing this for a long time, making my own vellum with wax. And I thought, oh my goodness, what am I thinking? Why aren't you doing the same thing with your doilies? So can you see? Let me get one that's not waxed. I get a butterfly that's not waxed. So, here's one that's not waxed, and here's one that is waxed. You can see through it. It's not white on the back anymore. Right? It's vellum. That's it. So, and here's another one that I did. I have a lot of these, but I just pulled it out to show you. See, you can see the back. And there. Don't even have to worry about those antennae anymore breaking because they're not going to break. So I decided, well, wait a minute. Let's make our doilies stronger. So I'm going to take a doily. Any doily will do. I'm going to take this one. No, maybe I'll take a different one. Something more vibrant. So I'll take this one. I've been printing doilies like crazy. I probably shouldn't have used this because I just realized it's kind of like plastic. Probably should have used a towel or something. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's just from the Dollar Tree. Anyway, so I'm going to take some wax. I'm going to sprinkle it on my doily that I printed on my printer and I'm going to put some shavings on it like this. I'm not printing too many but I just want to make sure it's covered. Not, not completely but enough. That should do it. Probably didn't even need that much. I'll probably get two doilies out of that and let me get my cover because I don't want to spill well I'll put that over there for now there's my cover I don't want to take any chances <laughs> not after the coffee spill then take this and put it right on your doily and then melt the wax those little wax shavings I mean, you could get any kind of wax, but I had candles, white ones. So everybody has white candles. You could use a heat tool too. You don't have to use an iron. This works really well with a heating tool, but it makes noise. And I didn't want to do that on video. So anyway, just do that. And then 
just take it, turn it over, take your paper towel, I'm more or less just making sure all the wax is kind of spread around than I am anything else. Oh my goodness, look at how vibrant that is. I hope you can see that. And I just kind of rub it with my paper, you know, with my kitchen towel. It's really not mo removing anything, I don't think. Um, but yeah, I'm just doing it until it's pretty much cool, you know, cooled off. Just making sure that, you know, the wax get all the way to the edges so that those edges are nice and strong obviously because I just tore that other one which obviously wasn't all the way to the edges yeah so there you go let me see if I can find the other one that's like this that is not waxed I think I had two well maybe I didn't I thought I did. I thought I had two of the same. But maybe I didn't. It's okay. I don't need two of the same. I'll just show you a different one. Okay, so this is the one that has the wax. No more worry about how strong it is or how strong it isn't because it's gorgeous and you can see it on both sides. Now you can fold it any way you want. I'm not going to because I don't want to put my lines in my, I don't want to put any lines in it yet because I don't know what I'm going to use it for. So what do you think? Is that a good idea? <laughs> I do think so. Let's do one that is, um, let's do a, just a print. This is on regular copy paper, like 20 pound regular copy paper. You can do any weight. I wouldn't do cards. Well, you could do cardstock if you wanted to, but it might just take longer for it to be vellum. So regular 20 pound copy paper. I figured while I was doing the doilies, I would show you this too. So that's about how much you need. I hope it's showing up in the camera. If it isn't, I'll have to, I'll just do the video over. Put this down, take your iron. Or your heat tool. And that looks all wax to me. I might've put too, a little bit too much wax on that, but that's okay. So you just take the iron like this. I have my iron on a wool setting. No steam. See the difference? Oh my goodness, it makes such a difference. It really makes a difference. And I have glued these, these, with my um, arc glitter glue onto cardstock. I've glued it onto um, it really looks nice glued on to script or nothing. It's just pretty on its own. You know, it's just beautiful to me. It's really pretty. I mean, this is the back and look how vibrant that is. So actually what I should be doing what I usually do is put it on a towel and then rub it I don't know why I've been doing it on the wax <laughs> so yeah this is just an old kitchen towel that you know I have a little stack in my craft room that I use just for crafts I can't even tell what's the front and what's the back right now
You don't have to rub it that much. I'm from really going. Okay, so there it is. It's showing up. That's the back. That's the front. Now vellum. Simple. Very, very simple. Very effective. Very beautiful. And you will never get your journal close enough to heat for it to do anything. It does not... It doesn't feel like wax. It doesn't, it's not sticky at all. And it's like seconds and you've got your whatever. So you could just make vellum all day long, <laughs> you know, make images into, into vellum all day long. It's so vibrant, so vibrant. And that's the back crazy it's beautiful okay let's do another doily let's do a um so for those of you that don't have um a print uh yeah for those of you that don't have a printer and you don't or you don't print on doilies this is just a um embossed avocado stained doily i'll put this down i'm gonna put some wax on it not too much. You really don't need that much. I'm just going to make sure my edges, it's going up against my edges. And put this back over it. Take your iron, wax it, and you can see it. You can see when it's done. This is done. I can see a little bit over here. So it's pretty much you're taking those beautiful napkins that you've been, that I know a lot of you have been making, and you will now have really beautiful, um, you'll now have beautiful napkins that, not napkins, I'm sorry. You can do this with napkins too. For sure, you can do this with napkins. But now you have beautiful doilies. I mean, even the embossed one, I'm gonna do this on the other side of the embossing so that I don't lose that. Um, this is like the, you know, un underneath part of the embossing. I'm just making sure that the wax has moved all the way to my edges. I mean, I'm really being hard on this. Like I'm really, oops, see, I teared it. I, I was just trying to show you, you could be really hard on it, but it's still warm, so I shouldn't have done that. I mean, it's still a doily. So you wanna make sure your edges are, are nice and waxed and what have you. And now you have a beautiful embossed vellum doily. Still need a little bit of wax there, but I won't, I won't keep doing that. Let's take one more and see what it looks like. Um, I printed one with some ledger. See how that looks. So I'm just going to lift this up and I already have wax on this. So I'm going to see if I need to add any additional because I've got, you know, I've been sprinkling a lot of wax on that, so likely I do not need any more wax, but we'll see. And you can just test it, you know. You just saw I didn't put any wax pellets on this, any little wax shavings, because I don't. I think I've had. I think I have enough wax on there to do a couple of doilies, but maybe not. We'll see. So. You just go over it, lift it up, see how it's doing. See if you might need to move it. Nope. Now, if I had a craft iron, I'd just go right over that. I wouldn't even have to do it with parchment paper over it. But I'm just going to do this because there's a little bit that just still hasn't 
got any wax on it, so I'm just going to rub it over this while it's still a little warm and there's still wax on my parchment paper, just to make sure it's all covered. And you don't have to, like I said, you don't have to wipe it with a paper towel. I was just showing you that that's what I do sometimes. So just, you know, make sure it's all covered with wax. It's still, my paper's still a little warm. So I'm just picking up the rest of the wax that's on there. That's really pretty. Can you see that? And now you can make anything you want out of it. And um, let me just put this back on top. Because there is still a little bit more. Oops, wrong side. Make sure that's the right side when you put it back down. Oops, so I have my left hand right side. And like I said, if I had a craft iron, which hasn't come yet, and I'm impatient, you wouldn't have to do this. I usually use my heat tool, but like I said, it just makes noise and yeah, I didn't want to do that on video. Hair dryer, that'll work. So yeah, that's it. Let's make sure it's good. Yeah. There it is. What do you think? Leave me a comment and tell me how you like that. I mean, I could do more. I'll do, um, let's do another image and some butterflies. So I'll put some butterflies here and I'll put this image here. This I, I printed um, on music sheet. I printed some roses on some music sheet. So what I did was I printed the music sheet and then, um, so it was one eight and a half by 11 music sheet printed. And then I took my rose image that I had and I put it into nine images, you know, wallet size. And then I took my music sheet and ran it back through the printer and now I don't have to fussy cut it because, yeah, looks pretty. That was just an idea. See, squirrel. <laughs> Stop squirreling. Stop squirreling. Do another Christmas image. And Santa. You know, these are all little fussy cuts that are hard to fussy cut. But you still want to use them, you know? So, yeah. I'll just do a few little images. Now he has a rose, so it'd be a little hard to fussy cut, maybe. Here's an image that would be hard to fussy cut. Here's an image you wouldn't want to get torn. So I'm just going to lay that out like this. I'm going to sprinkle my wax on my items. Like this this could be a disaster I've never done like a whole bunch of items like this at once I usually do like butterflies or whatever but this could be a disaster <laughs> I don't think so I think it'd be fine I really do so I'm just making sure I have enough wax on everything it's gonna melt anyway so look at that Santa oh my goodness he is so gorgeous. So gorgeous. Okay. So where's my top piece? <laughs> oh, Lord. Where did it go? All right. We will get a new one because I have no idea. I'm sorry for the noise. I really don't know what I did with that top piece. So just put your parchment paper down because you don't want to get the wax on your iron 
if, it, if you're using your household iron. If you're using your craft iron, I mean, it comes off of your iron very easily. You just wipe it when, before it's really, really cool, you know, cold. It comes right off. Like, just wipes right off. So, I'm just going to do this. And like I said, it could be a disaster because I already see that some things are moving into other things. I just can't really see what I'm doing here. And I shouldn't have used this mat because it's not staying flat. It's obviously curling because it's plastic. And I'm putting heat on it. So a towel would probably work best with, you know, put a towel down, then put your parchment paper down, and then, yeah. I don't know if I have gotten all of everything. Like I said, I've never done a lot of images at once, but we'll see how it works, doing a whole bunch of images at one time. And you could do, you know, probably three doilies at a time, you know, three across. I can see that I don't have enough wax on that, but that's all right. I'm doing a lot at one time. So then you're just going to lift it up and kind of, you know, take anything that doesn't have enough wax on it and put it someplace where, you know, there's a lot of wax still. Like there was a lot of wax there. Obviously not enough where this little butterfly was, so I'll kind of rub it into there and just put this aside. Yeah, I would I wouldn't probably do a lot at one time because I don't know where I've have where I really had wax and where I didn't. There's not a lot of light in my room right now either. So and you can always just do this and then put them where there is wax and then go over it again. Cause you can pretty much feel like where there's more wax than other places. And using this as a mat was a dumb idea. But I'm still going to put the video up because it worked. Everything is waxed. I'm just going to go over it one more time where there is wax, you know. Because, like, as you can see, this butterfly, it didn't get fully waxed. This one didn't either. This one is fully waxed, as you can see, both sides. But I'm just going to go over everything one more time. Like, put it all in the middle and not kind of rub it around so much. And I might put a little bit more on some of these pieces that didn't get any. Or that, you know, I'm missing some areas. Just, um, just a tiny bit. You don't need too much. And I'll show you how all these things turn into awesome ephemera. For your journals yeah put this back down and also this will re you know this will melt any extra wax that's on the paper that you already had there anyway 
by moving your items back into the wax. So I was really moving this around a lot, so. And like I said, this is the very first time I've ever done so many items at once, but it can be done. <laughs> Your items that don't have it. Let me just put that over there. You know, that look like they haven't gotten wax on it yet. Kind of rub it around in an area that does still have some wax. And just be careful, don't burn yourself. You know, it can still be a little bit hot. I mean, mine's warm. I'm just going to kind of move this and put this and put my items on my towel only because I have a lot of items and I can't even see what turned into vellum and what didn't. You know what I had enough wax on and what I didn't. I think I covered everything. Everything looks covered. Except this one little butterfly. It had a little bit of white on it. So, you can feel the wax on your paper, so don't worry about, oh, which side should I use? I think this is the only thing that did not have enough wax on it. And I did it. Okay. Now it's fine. Let me put this out of the way. And now I'm just going to take my paper towel and make sure that everything is fully waxed. I'm just pushing, you know, any warm wax up in the areas that don't have it. See the back of this. So I wouldn't do a whole bunch of items at once. It doesn't, you know, you'll have to go over it if you do. And if you don't want a lot of wax on it, then you could put just um, a piece of, um, like a, what do you call it? Painter's paper or something like that to absorb wax so it doesn't get made into vellum but it gets brighter if that makes sense but I like this vellum because these items are so fragile and so little so dainty but oh my goodness it's so fun see it's back that's the front See up here, it didn't get the wax, but the rest of it did. So I'm kind of glad that it didn't so that you could still see where the paper is and where the wax got. And look at this little one. How cute is that? It's now a stamp, like a sticker. Just put some um, uh, double-sided tape or glue, you know, and yeah, you've got a sticker. Here's some more butterflies. Here's the train. This is from the um, kit that I'm using now. You can see where I didn't get the wax. I can go over that later. The butterflies are just so pretty. Let me put this on something. I'll put these all on here so that you can see how pretty everything is. some butterflies um, 
See how beautiful. I love this Santa. I think he came out really well. And it makes everything just pop. And you no longer have to print on the back of your of your doilies because you can see the back. Because, yeah, and it's nice and strong now too, you know? And you could cut them, you know, fussy cut them if you wanted to. Look how pretty that is. I love that, that came out so pretty. And then here's your cinnamon sticks. Kind of fun, right? I mean, so fun. So fun. Now, I didn't get wax on all of that. Can you see that? It's just, I mean, it, you can still see the back of it compared to the other ones. But, like, here's the rose that's waxed. And here's the rose that is not. See? There's a difference. Here is a doily that's waxed. And here's one that isn't. Look how much more vibrant that doily is compared to this one. Is it showing up? <laughs> and I don't want to do it, but I'm not going to because I'll rip it. But it's awesome. It's great. It's fabulous. It's great. So all you have to do is go ahead for those of you who love doilies and want to print on them and have them forever or butterflies or these cute, cute little elves or you didn't see my bow. Look at it. And now I don't have to worry about it tearing, right? And I do bows, I do paper bows all the time. There's a butterfly. So yeah, that's it. Let me move this out of the way so that you can see everything better. This is one that is not. This is stained with tea. And then let me get a clear one. I'll show you. I, I think I showed you already, but let me get that. There's another butterfly. And I thought that I had, oh, yeah, the one I tore. There's the clear one. But I've been, you know, playing with it and doing all kinds of things with it. You wouldn't be doing that. But I'm just saying, you know, you've got yourself a great item. Another way to print your doilies and preserve them. See these edges, I'd probably do a little bit more wax on those edges. Just, you know, and I, you don't have to put more wax on it. Just put it in your parchment paper, put your iron on it and those, and that edge will wax. You know, it'll move over. Yeah, that's it. My hands aren't dirty, they don't feel waxy. You saw how much wax I was using? Nothing feels like wax. It feels like, it feels like vellum, <laughs> but it's not. And we didn't have to use any glue or pastes or anything. It's like immediate. Yeah, I like it. I like microwave type stuff. I, not, well, I don't like microwave. I don't like microwave food, but I like the microwave, like how quick things can be when you um when you're crafting so yeah that's today's video i hope that you enjoyed that i hope that i've inspired you in some way i will put a link on my facebook and in some of the groups to let y'all know what i've been up to in my craft room today yes i still have lots to finish here are some ones that are not waxed just so that you can see those but that's real pretty and on its own when it's um uh embossed and what i do is i put like eight eight of them in my embossing folder and um run it through and then just peel them back apart and they all turn out embossed like this like you don't have to worry 
that, you know, a bottom one or a top one is not going to get embossed because they all end up embossed the same amount of embossing. These all went through the same embossing folder at the same time. I'm sorry, I sound like a frog. I have no idea why I sound like a frog, but I do. <laughs> anyway, and you don't have to make them all vellum. I'm just giving you an idea. Isn't this gorgeous? This is from um, the bumper kit, right, Chimbella? Um, the Christmas bumper kit. This is like one of my favorite pages. I've used it like a thousand times in a thousand projects. <laughs> um, this is from the Ooh La La Vintage Treasures Christmas Kit. Isn't it beautiful on the doily? I mean, it's gorgeous, but that's white on the back. But once I wax it, it won't be white anymore. And here's one with some music. Here's one that I did with, um, this was a collage and I ran it through and I love it. I just love it. And then here's another one. And, oh, I did. I waxed a coffee stained one already. Tea stain. This is tea stained. That's it. I didn't do a lot of waxing on that one. But I love it. I just love these. I think they're awesome. So, tell your friends to stop by and get a lesson on how to make faux vellum doilies. Or anything, especially butterflies. Because those can be a pain in the neck. I mean, you go through all the trouble of fussy cutting their little antennae, and then it breaks, <laughs> or you have to cut it off. So yeah, but not anymore. All right, that's all I have for today. I'm so glad that you stopped by. Thank you for sticking it out with me throughout the whole video, if you have. Leave me a comment below because I am running a very big, huge giveaway. And one of the things is going to be a completed journal. That's going to be just one. So leave me a comment between now and the time I have a thousand subscribers. And then I am going to do a drawing and the winner is going to receive a journal. Several things. There's going to be several, several things, several tiers. I'm going to do like a first place or a second place or, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, I'm almost at a thousand subscribers. I cannot thank you enough. All of you who have, um, subscribed to my channel and have been so kind and loving and caring and I just love you all so much and so thank you again from the bottom of my heart I could play with these all day I just love them it's like so pretty everything is so pretty so until next time which will be tomorrow be well be safe and God bless love y'all bye-bye